Hi guys, Ian Johnson from DriveSuccess.com. Today we're going to talk about the importance of understanding how you should measure holding costs versus um, increasing your volume purchases, okay? So in this case, whether you should, you know, basically only buy what you need to fulfill existing demand or whether you should use your economies of scale, drive down your purchase prices, and drive down your per unit freight costs on incoming parts. So it's basically a question of are you happy with what you've got or are you willing to take on more? barring in mind what those holding costs will be. So we're going to kind of take a look at that today. Uh, we're going to start off by, by talking about holding costs. Now I've covered this a couple of other times in, in other videos. Holding costs are basically the cost to hold inventory without sales, okay? And I've, I've, I've talked about this a number of times in the past. When you hold inventory, it's more likely you're going to come across things like um, obsolescence, okay? If you hold on to it too long, it's more than likely that your market's going to basically push that that product offering away and not want anything to do with it. Obsolescence is an issue. Damage is an issue. Okay, the longer you hold inventory, the more likely it is to become damaged. Um, so damage is an issue. Uh, theft, okay, uh, or, or pilferage, that's an issue. If you hold on to inventory for too long, someone may steal it. It, it, it happens. Um, and then, you know, probably most importantly is financing, okay? The cost of finance inventory. All companies at this point in time are basically financing inventory with outside financing. Um, and even though you know interest rates are at historical lows right now, you know <laughs> we've got an economy where customers are taking too long to pay. So it really doesn't matter how low those interest rates are. Customers take too long to pay, your financing costs are going to go up. Now, in general, when you look at holding costs, it's generally accepted that holding costs are, on average, okay, about three percent of the inventory value on hand per month. Now that may seem kind of steep, but that's actually what it is. And if you actually track the cost of obsolescence, damage, theft, finance, and one thing I'd forgotten here is uh, freight, okay, per unit freight costs. If you, if you track these things and these aspects of inventory, you're going to find that 3% is pretty close. So yes, if you had a, an inventory value of 1 million, it's not uncommon if that inventory value is maintained month over month, year after year, it's not uncommon for that inventory holding cost to be around $300,000 a year. Sounds absurd, but you know, there's a lot of companies out there that have issues with these things. So what we want to do is we want to understand that this 3% monthly holding cost is what we're going to base our decision on whether or not we should buy more or maintain our current position, okay? So we're going to use this 3% and we're going to multiply it by the product's cogs, okay? So let's say um, month number one, okay? You buy a product, it costs you a certain amount, it costs you $8 in freight to get into your house, into your warehouse. Let's say it's $10 when it lands into your, into your warehouse, okay? If you hold it for one month, that says that it's going to be $10 multiplied by 0 0.03, which is going to give you, um, which is 30 cents, okay? So at the end of the first month, your cost at the end of month one, it's going to be $10.30, okay? Now you're going to hold on to it for another month, so month two. That's going to be $10.30 multiplied again by 3% because you're holding it for another month. And that's going to equal another, let's say, you know, 30 cents or 31 cents. That's going to make your new cost at the end of month to $10.61. So right now your current situation is you are ordering parts and you are holding them for a maximum period of two months. Any parts that you hold in the first month and you sell in the second, you're, you're selling it on a cost of about $10.30. It's $10 to get it into your warehouse in terms of price and freight. And then this 3% is the monthly holding cost right here of 3%. Okay? So at the end of the two months, you're looking at $10.61. Now, along comes a supplier and he says, look, i got a great deal for you. I'm going to offer you guys 4% discount. And I'm going to allow you to get into your warehouse for less, but you're going to have to buy four months worth of product in, in the first month. Now, normally most companies would just shy away from that because they'll say, yeah, we say 4%, but our holding costs are too high without really taking the time to look at them. Okay? So let's say in month number one, okay, you take that 4% offer. Okay? So that 4% is going to make your first purchase price $9.60. Okay? So the moment it lands into your warehouse, your freight and landing into your warehouse, it's $9.60. So you're going to multiply that by, um, by 3%, 3% at the end of the month. At the end of month one, it's going to be $0.29 cents in holding costs, which is going to make your new month one cost 
$9.89. Okay? So at the end of the first month, you're way ahead of the first month here after the first month's holding costs where you didn't buy more. Okay? Month number two. Okay? You're now going to start off with $9.89. You're going to hold some parts just as equally as long for, for one month. And at the end of the month, you're going to pay another $0.30. Cents, okay? And this is going to be $10.19. Okay? So again, you're still ahead of the game. Month number three. This is 1019 multiplied by 0 0.03. Sorry, it's 0 0.03 here. I made a mistake. 0 0.03, 0 0.0, 0 0.03. It's going to equal to 0 0.31, and that's going to give you $10.50 as a final cost at the end of the third month. Month four. This is going to start off at $10.50 multiplied by 0 0.03. It's going to give you 0 0.32. That's going to give you a final holding cost or final cost of 1082. Now, yes, by the fourth month, that 1082 is higher than the 1061. And in that case, you're talking about a 21 cent delta between not buying too much and buying more and using your economies of scale. Now, basically, these are, admittedly, these are hidden costs. But when you track the cost of obsolescence, damage, freight, uh, the incoming freight costs, the cost of theft, and the cost of financing, 3% is an average. In fact, there's a lot of companies that are at 4 or 5%. So this is not unrealistic, okay? What you have to do is you have to determine what your incoming costs are by buying the higher volume. What happens to your freight on the incoming parts? You're going to lower them, okay? And, and you're going to get a better price. So you want to know what that cost is at the end of each month. Now, mind you, you're not going to hold everything you buy for all four months. You're going to make some sales in the first month, you're going to make some sales in the second month, and you're going to make some sales in the third month. Every time you make sales in these three months, you're coming out ahead, even if you add those holding costs. Okay? The only time you might lose some amount is right here in the fourth month. You'll still make some sales, but maybe they won't be as high, and your costs will little be a little bit lower once you factor in the holding costs of 3%. Now, by that fourth month, you're going to have to place another order. This is how you measure the cost of additional inventory versus the holding costs. But in order to do that, you must understand what this 3% is. Now, there's a lot of things on my blog where you can see that information. I've shown it a little bit here, but you need to track what the costs are of obsolescence, the cost of damage, the cost of theft, financing, and freight, and, and all the other costs pertaining to electricity and those other, all those other things. And you're going to see that that 3% is not out of the realm of possibility because I've seen some companies at 4 or 5%. I've seen a, a, a lot of instances where damage and obsolescence is just all over the place and half the inventory is like full of product they can't sell to anybody else and it's a complete write-off. So if you want to do this type of analysis, understand you may be comfortable right here only because you, you know that it's not a cost of money. This analysis and this process works if, if you can control obsolescence, if you can control damage, and if you can control theft, meaning that if you have the ability to reduce the incidence of obsolescence, of damage, and theft, this will work. So that's it. Holding costs versus volume. Take the time to understand your holding costs. Take the time to understand the offer. Put that offer down on paper. See what it means to you on a holding cost month to month. Figure out what your holding costs are. Are they 3%? Are they 2%? Do this calculation by month and determine what your savings are versus this, of buying more, versus the status quo of not buying as much and just leaving it as is. All right, Ian Johnson, DriverSuccess.com. Bye-bye.